Well, we are learning new information about recent alleged health attacks on American diplomats in Cuba. According to medical records reviewed exclusively by CBS News, an American doctor who evaluated diplomats working in Havana has diagnosed them with some serious conditions, including mild traumatic brain injury. CBS News Radio executive editor and correspondent Steve Dorsey, he's been reporting on this, and he joins us now from Washington. Steve, what do we know about the brain injuries and the conditions of the diplomats who were actually hurt in these attacks? Well, as you mentioned, uh, those brain injuries have been diagnosed as mild traumatic brain injury and likely damage to the central nervous system in some of those diplomats among the Americans and Canadians who were treated by a team of doctors. And I want to read you now just a bit of a statement that we just got in from the University of Miami Health System. I'm quoting here. It says, in the case of U.S. diplomats, our physicians were consulted by the State Department. The expert teeth expertise of our physicians and researchers across a variety of fields naturally positions us to assist in these matters and we consider it our obligation and responsibility to share that knowledge as needed. We understand that this group of Americans and Canadians sought medical treatment after reporting these incidents or health attacks as Secretary of State Rex Tillerson describes them that began in late 2016. They visited doctors throughout March and April, including one doctor that was sent to Havana to assess the health of U.S. embassy workers there. Steve, in your reporting, you, you cite here, I'm looking at the CBS News website here, article that these diplomats, they're investigating whether they could be targets of a type of sonic attack. What does that mean? Yeah, this is bizarre, but essentially officials are looking into whether these incidents, whether these symptoms, which also include hearing loss and nausea and headaches and trouble with balance, could have been caused by a type of sonic device that perhaps was placed outside their home and was highly targeted. In some senses, you could hear it like a loud buzzing insect. In others, uh, it was inaudible and inaudible and, and likely targeted on diplomats living in the homes provided by the Cuban government at night while they were asleep. So bizarre, Steve, such a bizarre, bizarre case. Who do you think the U.S. government believes is responsible? Well, the U.S. government hasn't publicly announced its investigation, the details of what it's found so far, saying only it doesn't have a definitive cause or source of these incidents, but they are holding Cuba responsible for the protection of its diplomats, reminding them they have an international obligation to do so. The U.S. also kicked out two Cuban embassy officials here in Washington on May the 23rd. Is the U.S. concerned that there could be more diplomats in Cuba who could possibly be targeted and fall victim to these brain injuries? Well, sources tell me that there are, in fact, uh, more diplomats or U.S. embassy workers affected by these incidents who have reported them since November that are still in country. A number of them have already chosen to leave and return to the U.S. or uh, to go to postings in other countries. But yes, that is a real concern. So ultimately, Steve, how is this going to affect U.S.-Cuba relations? Well, that's a big question, especially for the State Department as it moves forward with a new relationship that the president wants with Cuba. Uh, that's a departure, of course, from the efforts under the Obama administration to warm up relations between the U.S. and Cuba. But what is interesting is yesterday the Treasury Department uh, removed several hundred Cuba-focused domain names from its list of blocked persons or entities that make it harder to do business with those groups. Uh, and companies in the U.S. It removed them, and that's a sign, perhaps, experts tell me, that the U.S. could be moving forward with plans to make it easier to do business in Cuba. You know, you mentioned that because in mid-September, the Trump administration is expected to roll out new regulations about travel and business with Cuba. Do you think that'll have an impact on that announcement, this, this situation? It absolutely could. Uh, many of these domain names, many of these companies uh, in this uh, Treasury release uh, were and are travel focused. How limited will these regu regulations make travel to Cuba for Americans and what ways can Americans travel there by uh, air right now on commercial scheduled flights and on cruise as well. So how will that affect this uh, in Cuba and how will that affect where they can stay and what they can do and for how long in Cuba as well. Steve Dorsey, thank you for your reporting, Steve. Thank you.